1964, the Air Force begins testing a new revolutionary machine, like nothing ever seen before. It was so groundbreaking that it was riding its own supersonic shockwave. It was going to be the future of American bombers, and yet this marvel of engineering never dropped a single bomb. The enormous efforts to develop such an aircraft would be tainted by tragedy. This is one of the most ambitious supersonic bomber projects the United States has ever done – the XB-70 Valkyrie. It all began as many Cold War stories do, with a problem. By the mid-1950s, the United States already had some of the most advanced bombers in the world – the lumbering but powerful B-52 Stratofortress and the sleek supersonic B-58 Hustler. But here's the catch – neither was good enough. The B-52 had massive range and payload, but it was too slow to escape the new generation of Soviet interceptors. The B-58 could outrun anything in the sky, but it didn't have the range to strike deep into the Soviet Union and make it home. So the Air Force made a bold demand – build us an aircraft that combines the best of both worlds. It had to carry the payload of a B-52, fly as fast as a B-58, and more than that, it needed to cruise at Mach 3, not just dash for a few minutes. This was no ordinary request, this was a demand for a bomber that simply didn't exist anywhere on Earth. To meet it, six contractors were invited to compete. Only two dared to show working prototypes – Boeing and North American Aviation. Both companies came back with wild designs – massive aircraft with detachable fuel tanks at the wingtips. The idea was clever – burn them dry, drop them off, and then blast forward at supersonic speeds toward the target. But in the end, North Americans' proposal stood out. In 1955, they were awarded the first development contract. Still, what they had on paper was only the beginning. Engineers soon realized that the initial design wouldn't survive the brutal conditions of Mach 3 flight. Key features had to be reimagined – sharper lines, sleeker aerodynamics, and a radical new wing that could actually bend downward at the tips to trap its own shockwaves. It wasn't just an evolution, it was a transformation. And out of that transformation came the aircraft that would soon be known as the XB-70 Valkyrie. To build an aircraft that could cruise at three times the speed of sound, North American engineers had to rethink almost everything about airplane design. The starting point was the wing. Instead of the trapezoidal shapes from early concepts, the Valkyrie adopted a long, slender delta wing, far more stable at supersonic speeds. But one idea from the original design survived, and it turned out to be the most ingenious feature – the folding wingtips. At first glance, they looked like simple aerodynamic surfaces. In reality, they were the key to the Valkyrie's performance. Here's how. In the early 1960s, a NACA wind tunnel study revealed that sharp points on a supersonic aircraft created strong shockwaves. And those shockwaves weren't just a nuisance, they were a potential source of high-pressure air. If you could trap them, you could use them. That's exactly what the Valkyrie did. Once it reached Mach 3, the giant wingtips folded downward, literally catching its own shockwaves. By riding or surfing on this cushion of compressed air, the XB-70 gained a 30% boost in lift. This was revolutionary. More lift meant more fuel and payload without resorting to larger, heavier wings. Less drag meant it could sustain Mach 3 efficiently, and the added range meant it could finally reach deep into Soviet territory without stopping to refuel. Of course, to generate those powerful shock waves in the first place, the Valkyrie needed equally radical engines. It carried six General Electric YJ-93 turbojets, each capable of producing nearly 30,000 pounds of thrust. Together, they provided the brute force required for sustained hypersonic flight. But the magic wasn't just in the engines themselves, it was in the air intakes. Each side of the aircraft housed a variable geometry duct, feeding three engines. The position wasn't accidental. The intake sat close to the aircraft's nose, precisely where they could create the shockwaves that the folding wingtips would later trap. In other words, the Valkyrie was designed so that its engines and wings worked together in perfect symbiosis. Then there was the problem of heat. At Mach 3, the friction of air alone was enough to make the skin of the aircraft hotter than a pizza oven. Traditional aluminium would have melted, so engineers turned to a novel solution. Sandwich panels made of two thin sheets of stainless steel bonded to a lightweight honeycomb core. 
In the hottest areas like the engine bays, they reinforced the structure with titanium. The result was unlike anything else in the sky, a bomber that didn't just fly at supersonic speeds, but thrived there. On paper, the XB-70 Valkyrie looked unstoppable. It had everything a bomber of the Cold War was supposed to have. Long range, a massive payload, and the ability to cruise at Mach 3. In many ways, it was the perfect aircraft, but the reality told a different story. The problems began almost immediately, not in the air, but on the ground. The XB-70 was so complex that even preparing it for flight was a challenge, and when it finally did take off for the first time, disaster struck right away. A hydraulic leak stopped the landing gear from retracting, and one of the engines surged, forcing a shutdown. Landing wasn't smooth either. A brake seized up, a tire blew out, and the aircraft barely made it back in one piece. And that was only the beginning. As testing pushed the Valkyrie closer to its Mach 3 promise, new issues appeared. Panels and components literally tore away under the extreme stresses of supersonic flight. Each flight became a battle not just with physics, but with the airframe itself. Still, these were engineering problems, the kind that could be solved with time and money. What really doomed the Valkyrie was something far bigger. By the early 1960s, the battlefield itself had changed. In the 1950s, the Air Force believed that nothing could stop a fast, high-altitude bomber. Anti-aircraft guns couldn't reach them, and interceptors couldn't catch them. That was the whole logic behind the Valkyrie. But then came the surface-to-air missile. In 1960, the Soviets proved their effectiveness by shooting down Francis Gary Powers' U-2 spy plane at 70,000 feet. Suddenly, speed and altitude were no longer a shield. Any aircraft, no matter how fast, could be tracked and destroyed. At the same time, there was another weapon stealing the spotlight, the intercontinental ballistic missile. It was cheaper, faster, and impossible to intercept. For nuclear strike missions, the ICBM made bombers look like relics overnight. The Air Force tried to keep the Valkyrie alive by repurposing it from high-altitude bomber to low-level penetrator. But flying at treetop level wasn't what the XB-70 was built for. It was too big, too fast, and too fragile. The program bounced between administrations, but the writing was on the wall. In the end, production was cut down to just two prototypes. Instead of becoming America's ultimate bomber, the Valkyrie became a flying laboratory used to study aerodynamics, propulsion, and materials science for future supersonic transports. The legacy was no longer about war, but about knowledge. And in that role, the XB-70 still left a mark. The XB-70 Valkyrie was born from ambition, a vision of unstoppable speed, unreachable altitude, and unmatched power. It never fulfilled its destiny as America's ultimate bomber. Instead, it became a symbol of a turning point in history, when technology leapt forward faster than strategy could keep up. The Valkyrie's fall was not a failure of engineering, but a reminder of how quickly the battlefield can change. What was once invincible became obsolete almost overnight. And yet, its influence lived on. Lessons from its aerodynamics, materials, and engines would echo in future designs. From experimental aircraft to supersonic transport concepts, the Valkyrie proved that even when a dream cannot survive, the pursuit of it can leave a legacy. In the end, the XB-70 was more than a bomber. It was a glimpse of what might have been, and a monument to the daring imagination of an era when engineers tried to outrun the future itself. Until next time, fly high and stay curious.